welcome to Inside the Business of Acting for this series of segments. I, I am, I'm very happy that you are here. Kate Linder is here. And so here's the lesson. First of all, you guys know that this series is about talking with successful working actors and industry folks about their career journeys and their turning points and their lessons learned along the way, all in our attempt to empower you on your own career journey. And, you know, as I look at you, it's so nice to see you. Yeah, it's again. Great really, to it's very you, nice Brad. to see you. When I think of proactive actor, I expect to go to the dictionary and open it up and see a picture of, of you because Aww. you clearly are, ha have been, and continue to be the most proactive actor in this business that I, I've ever heard of. I mean, here you are, you're a staple on The Young and the Restless for, tw is it 26? Yeah, it's over 26 years 26 now. years. Yeah, and it's amazing, I can't it, believe it. I, I mean, what an amazing <laughs> career journey. So I want to talk about the proactive piece of the, of the work you do because that's been evo evolutionary as well. You, I'm sure you started out doing it one kind of way and have kept up as the technology has changed, you know, there are these other ways to be proactive. So where does, what's the root of that in you? Are you proactive well, about I, everything? I just think that, um, well, as we all know, this business is really, really difficult. And I always tell people, if you don't want it more than anything, then do yourself a favor and do me a favor, because I don't want you in my business if you're not willing to work really hard. You know, get out. Because it, it's, it's not, the, there's so many people that say, well, I could do that. You know, they, they're sitting watching television. I could do that. But that's because you make it look easy, and you see. I, you guys make it look like anybody could do it. They can't. Well, it's just that, you know, there's so many people that just think that they're, that they don't have to work or work hard or work for it. And, and sure, there are people that it comes easy to them. Uh, and they're maybe the lucky ones. It never was that way for me. I, I feel like, and I feel like I'm still, I'm always trying to be, what, what's the next step? You know, where do I go, mm -hmm. go from here? But Young and the Restless, just, I, I, it's, it's interesting how that started because Tom Palmer was the uh, casting director at the time. He was mm -hmm. an amazing man. And I went in on a general interview. Who set it up for you? Uh, actually, this, this is really interesting because this interview came through the SAG casting committee. Really? Yes. Wow. And uh, Annie O'Donnell, uh, she, she set that up, and she, she's great. And I, I always give her full credit because if it wasn't for her, you know, none of this would, would be happening or would have happened. But so I went in on a general interview with Tom, and I left him a tape uh, of some of my work, and I went home, and I thought, oh, my gosh, you know, when is this, this, you know, when is this happening? C can I ask you about what the interview was like? Because I think that's a sort well, of Well, it, it was interesting. It, was, it wasn't very long, you know. Uh, it's like a look, we talked. See, hello, yeah, it was, you know, yeah. you know, hello, you know, how are you, basically, you know, what have you been doing, what do you want to do, that kind of thing. Right. And, um, and I have, you know, a tape here, right. and he said, great. This was at Television City? Yes. Yeah, okay. And so I went home, and a few days later, he called. And he said, listen, I have this role. He said, it is so small. If you blink, you're going to miss it. <laughs> but he said, I, I'm telling you that I am looking for something else for you on the show. Because usually if you do a small role like that, that's it for you. And, and, but he said, that's not the case. You know, I like you. I'm going to find something else for you. So I said, no, I, I would love to. I'll do it. And by the way, you believed him. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I totally believed him. Uh, but even so... Even if I hadn't believed him, I think I still would have done it because to me, acting is acting, and this is, you know, this is my chance, and I'm going to be acting whether it's small or not, and so this is what I'm going to do. So, and then they kept calling me back, and and then then soon we had uh, my first line was really was really could, something. So let's hear it. Because my first line was something my family never hears at home, and that was dinner is served. <laughs> that was my first line. So uh, that you was know, very so good. my husband said, "Boy, that was great acting." You know, because I know you never say that. So, right. Anyway, his method or something. Right. right. <laughs> but. Uh, but Tom had told me later, he said, you know, I use you as an example because like, he would do a lot of seminars. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, what if you hadn't have taken that role? Because 
He said, I, kept, I was going to get you something bigger, but then he said, you just made something out of it. And then the part started growing and growing and growing. And then, and, uh, and in the beginning, I didn't have any, I had very few lines. They would call me back. I was playing the maid to the richest woman in town, right. Jean Cooper, right. Mrs. Chancellor. Jean Cooper plays Mrs. Chancellor. And so, um, but you I were didn't there. have a lot of lines. But you were there. Yeah. But then as I was there for, you know, for a while, I thought, you know, I've got to do something with this. Because I'm either going to be, I've got to take a chance. I've got to go for it. Because if I don't do it, I'm going to be gone. So I have to do something. So I decided to make her kind of the comic relief. And there was comedy. And at that time, that was very risky because there wasn't any comedy. So did you talk with, it was the Bells at well, that time? Well, I, I just you... kind of like made her, I decided to make her man crazy. So every time anyone came to the door and I would open the door, yeah. no matter who it was, if it was Victor Newman, who was the star, yeah. or the plumber, it didn't matter. I would just kind of go like, oh. You know, I would try to do something. But did you talk? Did you like have a cr no, creative I, I, meeting? I, no, or you I just really did didn't. It? I just would do it. And yeah. then, there, like for instance, there was one day where I had to go in the script. It said I went outside and I was supposed to get the mail. That's all it said. Mm -hmm. So I I went outside, got the mail, looked around to make sure no one was looking, held it up, see if I could see through. You know what? No one was looking. Put it in my pocket. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Went in. Now I would always do this in blocking. So that if they didn't like it, they could say, don't do yeah, that. No surprises. Yeah. Right. I, I wouldn't just pull it on them during yeah. the take. But I always did it. And they left it in. It was things like that. I kept trying mm. to think of stuff. I would ask the props. I said, do you have, um, do you have a, a Walkman? I don't know, Walkman. <laughs> and, uh, and they go, what's yeah. that? Yeah, they go, yeah, what's that? Uh, they go, yeah, why? Well, so, you know. I just want to try something. So in the script, it's just, I was supposed to be vacuuming. But I put the Walkman on and was vacuuming. And, and it was kind yeah. of, you know, I just tried to make something, you know, of her. But I, I, ra I ran a, you know, fine line because Bill Bell, who was the creator, it was genius, total genius. Yeah, um, he was my boss. And he said, you know, you're, you know, he, don't go too far over on the other side. I mean, didn't, you know, I still had to be real. And comedy is really difficult to play because you have to play it as, a, as reality or it doesn't work. It has to, it has be, to subtle. be real. Yeah. It has to be real. So, that, anyway, Esther became this kind of character. In the beginning, I didn't have a name. And that was interesting because Gene Cooper, uh, one day during rehearsal, we were saying the lines as we were supposed to. And then when we went to tape, she started calling me Esther. And fortunately, I uh, responded and didn't go, who is who's that? Who's Esther, right. Yeah, and then other <laughs> characters started calling me yeah. that. And then uh, we had a national contest years later for the last name. Which ties into which your Valentine. wedding day, right? Well, that was interesting because Bill, Bill came to me and said, okay, I've picked several names and a couple of them here are Valentine or Diamond. You know, which one would you like? Esther Diamond, she could have been Esther Diamond or Esther Valentine. Yeah. And I thought, I thought, well, Valentine, I think it's going to be good luck because I was married on Valentine's Day. And it turned out to be. And it was. Because then 26 years later, and uh, it was a few years, I, I'm trying to think, maybe a couple years I was on the show before I became contracted. Mm. But then, so for 26 years. It's really interesting to me because the, in this new landscape that has become the business of acting and, and television, so much about television has changed, audiences have mm -hmm. changed, program content has changed. Um, the, the daytime dramas are, are being almost reinvented to try and find whoever the new audience is. And, and people have come and people have gone and, and, and people get sent off to strange places and we never hear from them again. But, but here you have this longevity on this show, and you seem to have survived all of the reinventions because of whatever those factors are that work in your in your favor. I mean, do you have a sense of do you have a sense of the change and that you're riding on top of it? Well, I I don't look at it that way. I don't take it for granted, and I you know you don't know if one day you could go upstairs and never come down again. So I try to do. You know, I don't look at it that way. I, I look at that I am playing this role. Um, I love this character. Esther is, you know, is an amazing character. And thank goodness she has been part of, a part of the Young and the Restless for all these years. And hopefully, you know, I look forward to her staying there uh, forever. 
but you know, but you have to do the work as well. You can't take it for granted. And I'm constantly trying to say, what can I do here? What can I do to make this fresh and to to make her believable? And she always has to be believable. So that's well, there's important. So many, I mean, there's some, really so many interesting lessons for students of, of, of acting here. And when we come back for segment two, and you're going to come back. You don't want, I'm not going to be here by myself. You're going to be here. Oh, right? You'll come of course. I mean, no, I, of course I, I, I won't be here. Thank you so much. <laughs> Um, I want to talk about that, and we will during our time together talk about one of the most amazing, most wonderful things that happened to you. And congratulations on your star in the oh, Hollywood Walk thanks, of Fame, which we will, what a cliffhanger! I That's was up amazing. all night thinking about <laughs> it's that amazing, one. Amazing, yeah. <laughs> this is Kate Linder, and I'm delighted that she is with us on Inside the Business of Acting. We're going to come back for segment two, and we hope you're going to come back and uh, be with us. I'm Brad Lamack in Los Angeles, and we'll see you then. <laughs>